How much did that experience teach you about how to handle a passenger when an emergency hits? Or did you not even think about it? I was going to say, uh, he, he, he didn't really handle it as if I was a passenger. He handled it as if he, we knew, he knew all of us in that cockpit were pilots. And so he handled it accordingly. Like, hey, I need you to do this. You do this. You do this. Got it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to fly the plane. You know, aviate, navigate, communicate. Aviate, fly the plane. He flew the plane. He's like, this is my plane. I'm flying it navigate we're doing this we're going back here we're doing that whatever it is communicate whoever's got the radios right he did a really good job with that he didn't have any problems with you know hey i need you to do this or like hey why don't you do that blah blah and it wasn't like there was a high workload that we needed to do stuff it was kind of just like okay what are we gonna do yeah you know we're in this situation what's gonna happen next where are we gonna go stuff like that so tensions were high definitely tensions were high uh kind of a crazy story um you know, what, what did I, what is the biggest takeaway that I learned is never second guess somebody who has experience, you know, I like that. kind of, we, we talked about it before, like if you're talking about the, you know, any pilot that flies, you know, 121 and then comes down to the GA world. Never second guess, or I should second guess. Excuse me. Second guess, always second guess somebody's ability. Not saying like you get into an airplane with somebody and it's their airplane they fly it and be like oh yeah i know more than you it's uh hey i know that this is your aircraft and i understand that and you're the pic this is your plane i'm gonna let you fly this plane but i'm never gonna let you take it to a place where it's unsafe or if i see something unsafe i'm not gonna just let it slide i'm gonna say something i'm gonna intervene because it's my safety on the line not just yours you know when you go flying with somebody you put your life in their hands unless you're flying their aircraft, right? What okay. So you're always you're always trying to CYA okay. no matter what. Devil's advocate. Where do you draw that line? You're flying with a dude or a chick and it's their plane. Okay. Where do you let me ask you this. Where do you draw the line beyond which if you do cross it, now you're not the person looking out for their safety, but you are the nosy passenger. Where's that line? Drawn? So I can't give you a perfect like this is the hard line because I'd say it's different with every pilot. Okay. With this guy that I'm talking about now, because I'm more experienced with him, I've flown with him plenty of other times now since that time, and we've done all, flights in his all his other aircraft. Um, he's let me fly before. It's it's a different because now he doesn't look at me as a pilot. He looks at me almost as like a mentor because I've superseded him not on hours but just on ratings i have my you know my cfi my double i mei everything like that my Got commercial it. and so he doesn't look at me as just like a not a nobody because he never looked at me as a nobody but he almost looks at me as like hey i want you to be criticizing my every move because okay that's different it's a different it's different and i'll get to what i'll get to your question but he he in this situation he now looks at me as like hey i want you to be that almost pilot mentor to help me get better because you have exceeded in all these other areas that I haven't, you know, yes, he has more hours and he has more experience in different aircraft type. Cause he has the Columbia. He has a kit Fox, which is a back uh, country aircraft. That thing is, Oh my gosh, that thing is so what, fun. What cars does this dude have? Uh, he's very modest with his cars. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> he's very modest with his cars. He doesn't, he has a cool model T. But, okay. Um, he, he's a big VW guy. Like okay. uh, he has a lot of VW things, uh, which are from like the seventies, eighties, I think. How old is he? Uh, I think he's in his seventies. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's an older guy. He's okay. an older gentleman. Really cool guy. Really awesome guy. Uh, really in touch with aviation. Uh, so he's got a st- uh, the Columbia, the Kit Fox. He's got a nineteen fifty seven J three Cub, like one of the OGs. Those he, are cool. He restored it himself. Those are cool. I uh, really, really, really wanted to fly that thing, but we're trying to sell it right now for him. And then he's got three Boeing Stearman. Oh. You know what those are? <laughs> PT-17 Stearmans. Uh-huh. So I've done most of my flying with him. He has and three the, of them? He's three of them. But one of them is in pieces that needs to be restored. Uh-huh. He has one that is just a regular Stearman, like what you would see, um, like just your iconic Stearman. Then he has one that's called the Ghost. And... Um, it's got like 680 horsepower. It looks like a World War One type 
aircraft. Let's see. I have a picture of it. I'll show you. But anyway. Stearman. They're do one of the, I I will own a Stearman one day. You I love will. it. Love it. Absolutely one of my most favorite planes I've ever flown. Okay, so you are a dude who will fly for the air. So let's talk about this because we're talking about this over lunch. You are the airline pilot who will use their airline piloting income to supplement their GA fun. Yeah, so I've always told people when I talk to them and how interesting I am or interesting, how interested I am in GA flying, I've always said I'm going to use my airline opportunity to fund my your fun fun having, you know, whether that be flying. So this is this is his regular steerman. That's the steerman he flies all the time. Oh, that's good looking. Yeah, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. He restored it himself. He did all the work on it. Radial engine. Radial engine. Yep. Radial engine. There's the front. Dude. Seriously, one of the most beautiful aircraft. And it's won awards. Like, he's had it for a long time. Um, That's pretty. Oh, crap. Here's his cub. Beautiful cub. That thing will fly backwards. Yeah. Yeah. You could get it to fly backwards, <laughs> no problem. And you get, you get a good old headwind. Here's his Kit Fox. Love it. Big, so, old, big old fat Alaska bushwheel tires. Big, big tailwheel guy. He loves tailwheel. Yeah, big tailwheel guy. He has you know, over thousands of hours of tailwheel time. Uh, and then this is his ghost ghost ship is what it's called. Let's see if I can get ghost it. Ghost ship? Ghost ship, yeah. Um, and this is like, he's trying to sell it because it's so fun and it's so like dangerous to Where fly. Where does he keep him? Uh, at his, his own airport. How cool is that one? Dude. Oh, so that one has a big radial, like a big, like higher horsepower. It's got a variable pitch prop, you know, constant speed. It's got dual ailerons. It's got seats for two, but the front seat's like covered up and it's got like a foam machine gun, like fake machine gun up there. And uh, it's an experimental aircraft. Like it's it's the real deal. It's freaking awesome. So back to what we were talking about a moment ago with people. So you were saying this guy, when he flies with you, he doesn't just look at you as a pastor. He looks at you as someone who he wants you to critique him. Exactly. Here's here's the cool thing about this industry, and it's so true. Every single person I fly with who knows I'm a CFI and who obviously, you know what I mean, which the people who I fly with who don't know that are practically zero. So every single person who I fly with knows that I'm a CFI. Right. And it's amazing because I have to say most pilots, even if they're just private, especially privates, will actually ask for their bad behavior to be right. pointed out. Yeah. It's Which, an amazing, I mean, great it takes culture. you back to a lot of what pilots say is a good pilot is always learning. Whether or not you're an experienced pilot or whether or not you're a 747 captain that's been in the industry for 40 years, you always need to be learning. You never are going to stop learning. Because think about it. What I kind of like to relate this to, if you ever meet a cocky pilot who's like, oh, I don't need to, I don't need to learn that, take, take, him, take, him, take him to this. Kind of give him a little humble check. A humble pie. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the 80s and let's just – just take it into let's let's do it for both ga and airline world what things were inside a ga airplane that are in ga airplane now like yes your basic six pack but think what's not from the 80s that's in there now your gps your adf's gone your i mean i don't know some people don't even have vor sometimes think about all the stuff that has advanced and if you're still stuck in the 80s you're never going to be able to fly an aircraft that's new or now you know it's it's so you're always learning think about it the, all you the stuff to. you know most of the airliners that are flying but were taken not the most newest like the newest ones but like your cirrus has more capable instrumentation than like my 145 or some older crj 200s like i can't fly an lpv approach but you can huh interesting. we don't have was in the 145 do you really now no so do so that's fascinating with scheduling. We're only allowed to fly LNAV minima. So do they specifically use that on airports that don't have WAS approaches? Uh, that makes sense. Otherwise, you're just shooting yourself in the butt. Yeah, yeah. So we, I mean, if if not, we usually just revert to a, like a localizer or an ILS. Dude, and this is like carrying passengers. Yeah, yeah. This People is, bought a ticket online. Yes. Exactly, and their pilot can't shoot. But there an LPV is, approach. I would say, I wouldn't say that every aircraft is like that because I know that they're updating them. Like I would, I wouldn't say day by day, but over the course of time, we're getting the update of our avionics so that we can have WAS and fly an LPV approach. 